This is going to be your guide to using Paradox Donphan in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Starting off with Great Tusk, which has insane stats. 115 on the hit points, 131 attack, 131 defense. We just have a natural 115, 131 Pokemon that does crazy damage and has a good enough speed. This is Power Creep Garchomp. And 53 special defense is low, but you'll survive something with the 115 attack, and 87 speed, while it also seems kind of low, in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet meta, everything is bulky. So 87, just like outspeeding tanks and being a wall breaker on 131, actually really good. Then we have Headlong Rush. So let's power creep Earthquake while we're at it. So this is close combat, but for Earthquake, 120 base power stab ground move. We also get the close combat for our fighting type, knock off for coverage, and you can just kind of put whatever you want here because the coverage is insane. We have Play Rough, we have Ice Fang, we have Ice Spinner. We can go into a couple other things. Taunt, do you just want to shut down a tank, force them to switch out, and then the incoming Pokemon eats an absurd hit? Yeah, you can do that. And Protosynthesis as an option for like Sunny Day strats, or if you want to throw on the booster energy. Expert Belt here is something I want to kind of play around with the idea of if you go for a coverage Great Tusk. We also have Heavy Slam, Iron Head, if you want it. So if you're just playing for like super effective hits, yeah, the Expert Belt is going to swing damage to where if you hit something super on the 131 attack, it's just a KO. Life Orb with your natural bulk is also really good. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of the drawbacks, but on 115, 131... You're either getting like two hit KO'd on like a 60%, 60% hit, or you're just surviving too much. There's not gonna be really many situations where you're at like 9% health and the life orb ends up KOing you. But if that happened, that means you also got the KO on the opposing Pokemon by just crushing them with some kind of crazy damage. So if life orb is swinging the damage, that's going to be pretty good. And the Pokemon's just strong. It's just an honest, strong Pokemon, which is a kind of rare to consider when it comes to uh just the game in general however the drawback is absurd weaknesses we have five weaknesses fairy ice psychic grass water flying a couple of those pretty common electric immunity some whatever resistances so yeah avoid super effective hits now i guess we can survive some super effective hits but if the opponent is going like life orb with terrestrialization or throwing like a choice item onto it even physically probably going to have a bad time so those are some things to keep in mind but the idea is you just want to play as a coverage wall breaker and you're really good at that especially in the crazy pokemon scarlet and violet meta and then showing the idea of the booster energy like you actually boost your attack even with the jolly nature i don't think you need to do some weird stuff to get like a speed boost wow it would actually be this i don't know about the special survivability but like, yeah, you look at this, okay, you can go either way on the booster energy. I do recommend just raw damage, get that life orb, don't have the burn. But if you're running other Paradox Pokemon, Great Tusk is just a good bundle of stats without an ability effectively. So that's why I said Expert Belt, because it frees up the life orb and the booster energy for other Pokemon on your team, and Great Tusk doesn't really care. It's also a really good sponge for other items like the Assault Vest, and this is not a moveset, just kind of showing you, like, yeah, it gets Play Rough, Iron Head, Ice Spinner, whatever wild coverage you want to build out. And if you're running something that wants to be around a little longer, like the Assault Vest, then you can have the Earthquake. And naturally, with like 115 hit points, 131 defense, you can just run it like a Crocoon. You go Chesto, Resto, Bulk Up, and then you win. So also just an absurd physical tank, but the weakness is going to be one hit KO moves. So have that Terra flying for the Fissure. After that, we have Iron Treads, which is a really weird physical attacker. So 112 attack, 106 speed. Booster energy giving you that plus one. So that's just going to be outspeeding Scarf 105s, 102s like Guard Chomp, plus one 100s and lowers. So like you naturally just kind of kick up and start hurting things. Uh, but this is going to come back down into coverage as well. That unless you go like Terra Ground, Earthquake, Stab, 112, going to find a lot of two hit KOs, but not a lot of one hit KOs unless you land those super effective hits. And we also just have some coverage you can run down. Zen Headbutt for poison type Pokemon. We also just kind of can throw down the wild charge if we really need to get rid of something like the Dondozo. Yeah, you just like outspeed and hurt them. 
And even though it looks like these Pokemon play the same, you still need to pick the correct one for the situation you're going for. Like, this Great Tusk or this Great Tusk is just going to be better at wall breaking with that 131 speed and not really, like, caring about the speed tiers between 87 and 106. And especially, like, on the 112 attack with not a play rough or, like, different kind of coverage. So, something to keep in mind. But the 106 speed is just good. And with the booster energy, you turn this thing into a sweeper, and then you just look to crush squishy Pokemon, which is just fine. Uh, playing around with the numbers on the booster energy kind of gets weird. So, think about level 50 on these, like, weird attack numbers, is that you actually don't have to 252. So, you buy a free hit point and special defense stat, I guess, is a way of looking at it. And then you have to, like, play around with the numbers to land where you want. So this booster energy gives you that 30% damage life orb effect without giving the speed boost. And then it kind of catches the tiers in between, but you're just outsped by jolly, timid, 100 base speed Pokemon. So I don't see too much of a point of trying to run iron treads like this. I think it's too cute, but it doesn't buy you anything because we have 158 speed versus 152. And then like 183 attack versus the 162 attack. Great Tusk is just winning here, even though you're going for, like, the booster energy. So, if you don't want to do that, then, yeah, just run Life Orb. Like, if you need to find more damage on the Iron Treads, 106 is still a really good speed tier. Because, as we talked about, 87. Somehow a pretty solid speed tier right now with how bulky the meta is. And then you just do that. And it's kind of the same idea. And then whatever coverage you need and whatever the meta dictates. Now, there could be an angle of things speeding up a bit with Pokemon like Chi Yu coming into the game. So, yeah, having that 106 speed, going to be good. Having that booster energy on top of it to kind of catch all into scarves or anything means you're just sitting there and you're hitting those super effectives and you're just kind of winning. So that's what I mean, like, it just kind of comes full circle to where you're running pretty much this if you're running the Iron Treads, and you're running pretty much this if you're looking to wall break with Great Tusk, and don't try to get them switched around because they are made to do what they're specialized in, and then you perfect it, and then you play it optimally, and then Pokemon's good. Now my final thoughts for the end of the video are conflicted because after breaking down the movesets and what the Pokemon want to do, they are surprisingly honest for Generation 9 Pokemon, especially Paradox Pokemon, but the stats are very dishonest. Like that's that's still not okay on a Pokemon. I guess Iron Treads, like a 106, 115 physical attack pseudo sweeper that has like weird boosting. There we go. That's fair. That Pokemon's cool. This, though, I think is going to be very abused and abusive, where, like, the moveset's probably just going to hit this in the battle stadium, and then you get bodied by it because they remove your special attacker, and you have no way of getting over this, again, into, like, the flying terror type. And then the game just gets, like, ugly and stall, especially into, like, uh, an iron defense matchup or something. So, even though Great Tusk is an honest wall breaker, it has enough in its kit to be this. And then, like... I just threw out some numbers here because, oh, speed creep and all that fun stuff. Actually, I've been saying, like, you want to speed creep into 114 for the speed creep 90 uninvested Pokemon. And that's still, like, strong. That's still pretty good and ridiculous. And it's like, yeah, just play with play this with a Blissey. And they got, like, bulk up, crow, chesto, resto, knock off items to make the opponent weaker, earthquake. And if someone brings sun, you just get stronger and just kind of win on this. It doesn't, like, work into everything on, like, crazy coverage. So another Terra Flying Tank Pokemon makes the game ugly. But, like, I think this is going to body people. And I don't think it invalidates the other movesets. Because the other movesets are just get up and go. Kind of like Lemora. You just run in with a 131-87 Pokemon and you crush them on damage. I guess it also opens up Choice Band option. And they just surprisingly one-shot everything like we see with Lemora. You do that as well. So different options... But if you mispredict against Great Tusk, you get bodied and that's game. So, interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.